I think that's a great idea. You know, finding an investor friendly real estate agent. Um, I was in real estate for a number of years uh, before the you know recession and all that. And, and I think that that's a great idea because yeah. every, especially right now in this market, well, every market's local, of course, but like everybody's feeling the crunch of the interest rates. And I think that a lot of real estate agents out there are looking to try and diversify and create yeah. other ways to make money. And that's yeah. a great way for a real estate agent. If there are any real estate agents listening right now, this is a great way. Get investor friendly, start going out there and networking with investors who are doing flips and offer that service. Welcome back everybody to the Mind Your Own Business Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today we have my good friend, Jamie the Thunder Meyer. Jamie's a, a good buddy of mine, and we're in uh, some mastermind groups together. Jamie's in real estate, amongst other things. Jamie, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here, brother. Thank you, Stephen, for <laughs> inviting me to the amazing, let's say amazing podcast that you got going here. And like I said, we're uh, good friends on another mastermind group, and that's where we met each other. And like I said, it's been a great journey so far, uh, being great friends with, together with you. So. I started real estate three years ago, in, uh, March. I got into a real estate program called Fortune Builders. Basically, teach you from A to Z. You sign up for the program, and then you get all kinds of stuff. And then you get coaching for a year. You just set up a call. You can get a couple calls a day, or whatever it is. And then they, they kind of help you get to go through a situation that you have come up right. And then they also they have like a Facebook group where we could throw deals up there and this, that. Three years ago, you guys started in real estate. What did you do before real estate? I had a W-2 job and surveyed. I surveyed for well, almost 20 years now. So like property surveys? like Property, commercial, uh, road construction, you name it. I've been, I've been on some really big projects too, like millions and millions of dollar projects. The big ones are been like highway stuff, like bridges, and redoing, adding more lanes, whatever it is. I'm helping out one right now too. This this is a, like a bus lane. It's a, here in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis area, where they're going from the downtown St. Paul area to an outer suburb. So is that near the Mall of America? Um, not this one. I've been to the Mall of America one time. I got a whole bunch of cheese curds in me, and I almost threw up, and then I left. That that <laughs> place is uh, one of a kind. That is, is it, huge. Yeah, it's, that's the way to say it. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't. Been, it's been a while since I've been there. It's probably, God, I would have to say probably a good two years, three years since I've been there. I don't you know. Like you said, it's too big. It's massive. Yeah, they got a they got their own uh, college in there, right? Their own university inside. Yeah, and then they also have like play area for kids and stuff. Like they have a little roller coasters and crazy, like a uh, theme park, a little so, small theme park for kids. So tell me a little bit about like why you wanted to leave a W two and get involved in real estate. I basically wanted to be my own boss. Like I'm sick of working for somebody else and making money for them, right? That's the big thing with entrepreneurs. Like you want to be do your own thing and like I said, basically create financial freedom so you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, right? Yeah. So that's basically the main gist of it. Like I was sick of work and making money for somebody else. So in the last three years, right? So you got involved in real estate, what, in... 2019 or 2020? Just, yeah, just before COVID. So when COVID went down, normally they, they have places you go for live coaching stuff. Like I had a three-day one that I got into just before COVID. And then we actually went on site and we walked through some houses and said, okay, what, what are we going to fix on this? And then like basically, you know, got we had like a little spreadsheet and we kind of went over the spreadsheet of how, what we're going to fix, what it's going to cost. Just kind of went through that whole feel like that actually it was like a week later i believe COVID hit well then that shut down their whole live stuff and then they went to virtual zoom stuff and so then which wasn't like you said it we had we were stuck at home right so which was a good thing also too be for us on that side because then we just sat and watched zoom calls and and learned it that way instead of i mean it's granted it's always nicer to be you know on site doing things but it was also wasn't was a waste of time either, right? Because we were sitting at, we had to be home anyway. So it's like, 
least we were working, or at least doing something that we love doing, right? Yeah. So basically, it forced you to be a remote real estate investor, yeah. but and then it showed you that you could do that, and it was possible. You didn't have to be on site to make those deals happen. Yeah, exactly. So, what kind of was- deals did you? like start looking at kind of take me through like your journey through real estate investing, like what you started with and maybe what you're, you're doing now with it. Our very first flip was um, we paid 420 for it. Um, the rehab was right around 130 and we ended up selling it for 700. Wow. That's good. Um, so 560 all in. Yep. Sold it for yep. 700. So after, uh, after fees, you guys netted about a hundred thousand. A little less than that. All okay. said and done, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great, yep. man. And how long did that flip take? That one took, I believe, it's seven months. So then, from that one, so we went on the luxury side of things. Then you know, because like you said, the uh, there's cheaper flips, right? You know, get into that two hundred, three hundred range, and you know, spend fifty or fifty k on a, you know the rehab, and then and then selling it, right? So with being that one, it was like. Like I said, it kind of got our got ourselves into a luxury side of things. So then we went to we just stayed that same road. We, our next house we got literally got up the kitty corner up the road because well there's three kids and then the mother and father the father passed away and then the mother passed away during COVID. So they were going to put their house on the market and um, sell it. They actually came down and went and toured our house, the one we flipped when we had an open house or whatever that I, you know, we weren't there at that time, you know, but they came and threw it. And then they said they were putting their house on Well, they caught wind that, Hey, they, they asked us if we would do it because their mom was really against, because not only the area that we're in, they also what what was going is going on because the times were good, well, those people were tearing them down, completely tearing them down, and then building like a one point, say one point five to two million dollar house. You know, it went big because they it, and they could get away with it because it was just the area, right? They asked if we were gonna do that, and I said, no, we will just update everything and then we'll put it back on the market. So they said, well, can you give us an offer? And we gave them an offer, and they said accepted it. And it was pretty cool with that one because then we brought them in through the journey two of the it was two daughters and a son the son lived in missouri so but during the thing the two daughters would ask if we could if they could stop by and we'd stop by and show them what was going on and and then the son actually came back one of the one of the times that we were pretty close to being done and um he got to go through it too we brought him through it um so he got to see a little bit closer when it was done but not completely what did the numbers look like on that deal Bought that one at five twenty five. Um, the rehab was um, one eighty. Okay. And we sold that one for eight fifty five. Okay. Yeah, eight fifty five. Okay, that's great. So another uh, another deal where there was about a hundred or so, right? Yep. Yep. A little less. Okay. Yep. That's awesome, man. That's great. Yep. And so, yep. would you say that it's the same amount of work to do a bigger deal like that than a smaller? house or is it a little bit more work basically what i'm getting at is like you know if you had to do it again or not do it again you're doing it again you're currently doing it but like would you go after the smaller things like do they sell faster or do the bigger ones sell faster or what do you notice there that that's the thing with the luxury side is um it sells it doesn't sell quite as fast as um the little ones right they they just don't they don't like they don't quite sell us because you obviously you got to have a different buyer when you're getting in in the 700 to a million dollar range. Right. That's okay. a different, different person, you know? So, yeah. So like, like you said, it's luxury. I, I love it because it's just, like you said, it's a bigger animal. And then I don't know, you get to, you can, you get to really nail down some really cool things that you can do. So, you know, like a two hundred dollar flip or two hundred k to you know whatever those kind of ranges, you gotta like get by all cheap shit and just it just. I, I'm not saying it's not enjoyable, but I I enjoy like you know going the luxury side where you can actually get get some really nice quality stuff, right? Nice Me cabinets, too. nice Me countertops, too. you know, because on a cheaper flip you you can't do that. You can't afford it. It, it won't work. You know. Yeah. 
I agree. And in our construction yeah, company, yeah, that's what we focus on too. We focus on yeah. the high quality stuff. We don't we don't actually work with any investors at all because we don't want to do cheap stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then it went from that one to we went then we made a big jump. We bought um this is our million dollar flip actually. We went from we bought it at six fifty, um two hundred and 280 for the rehab and then we sold it for 1.1 wow okay so you guys on that one you netted probably what 250 ish no we went we we're right at 100 just because we had oh. some hiccups of on the very end of it we had we had a chimney that failed so that caused a whole ruckus wow it, that one sucked that one for that part of stuff like that came up the, the buyer was a doctor, paid cash, right? And was just nitpicking things and which I get it. You know, we're at that range where they can and they and they did it. But the what the whole the whole what the chimney thing was was very interesting learning um because the city didn't even have their codes weren't even up to date to like can justify that chimney was because the actual the chimney companies, we had two people come and bid, or bid it, and two of them were both of them were like, "Wow, this chimney is in macklin shape!" Like, wow, you no, know, like, but she was anal; she wanted it lined, so it was, so it came into a like they can line it, but it was just a hassle, and it costed more than we wanted it to be. But it is what it is, right? At that point. Yeah. So, I mean, that's some of the pitfalls, right? Like some of the pitfalls of going with like a higher bracket or higher higher um, sales prices, you're going to get those some buyers who are really going to be nitpicky about stuff, right? Yep. So some of the yep. pitfalls of real estate, invest. I mean, there's a lot of pitfalls in real estate investing, right? But there's yep. also a massive amount of upside as well. Right. Exactly. Exactly. There's always, like you said, there's other, there's good, you know, there's still good things out there, you know, like good deals and like good opportunities you know especially any investors you know that i've had no in from any and from all from so far i've raised over a million dollars just in investors jumping in on opportunities like these you know to you know and they're getting double digit returns you know okay so let's talk about that a little bit so you you don't you really use any of your own money to buy these flips no no i don't use uh Nope, I don't use, I use, I take that back. I use some of it right away when we got started, but after it got rolling, then I didn't, then I didn't use anymore. Cause like I said, I, I knew I could start raising money or like you said, investors like you, I, whoever, um, you know, they wanted the opportunity to earn money um, off, off the side. Like you said, the big thing of, you know, like investors is, we got to start them on a self-direct account. So then, you know, they're not getting taxed on it. So they can, like you said, put their money in there and then we borrow, they borrow to us. And then we, and then we give them the return plus their profit. And then they don't get taxed on that because. Okay. Like said, it's, well, let's, so. let's dive, let's dive into that part a little bit more. So, I mean, you and I both know self-directed IRAs and stuff, but I think that there's like a common misconception with IRAs that you can't, invest in real estate so talk about that a little bit how how can people invest in real estate with an ira well so the big one is if if like if you have your current say if you're a w-2 and your current job you can the only thing that with a current current 401k ira ira is is you then that then it's a percent you can only borrow against a percent of it but if you have a previous 401k that's golden because what you can do is take what if you want to say there's a hundred K in there and you want to take 50 K out of it and throw it in a self-direct, you just take that transfers right into a self-direct. It doesn't, you know, you know, no, again, nobody touches it. it goes right into the account. Nobody gets, you're not getting tax on it. And so then when you, okay, so now this investor wants to invest 50 K with me. Well then, okay. Then I, he gives me the 50 K say he makes, I don't know, whatever the deal is, say he makes 10 K on the opportunity. So then he gets his 50k back plus 10k. He has to pay the taxes on the 10k because we have to we have to k one him in order because we you know like I said we pay that. So technically he's only going to have to pay the taxes on that to go back in there. Again now that goes only goes back in there and then 
now he can okay so now the next now he's got 60k in there now he can borrow it again and now like you said now he won't get you know whatever he makes he only gets he only has to pay taxes on what he makes on okay that opportunity so okay so he pay they do pay taxes on the money that they make so if he makes yeah. 10 grand he pays taxes on that 10 grand yeah but it that, goes back in there it goes back into the ira right yeah 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 because we have to because we have to tax him on that you know because we because we on our end we gotta you know file taxes and we we paid him 10k you know on his because the 50k really doesn't come in and affect i mean it, it helps us but then also but it doesn't really but say then now he made 10k on his 50 50k investment so that's where we gotta we have to give him a tax thing and saying hey we gave you 10 we we paid you 10k profit so he's got to claim that so you know what I'm saying? got it okay so then the big advantage it sounds like is that they can pull money out of that without penalty because they're not actually pulling it out they're loaning it to themselves exactly so that's exactly. the big advantage you're right they're exactly they are you're exactly right they're loaning it to their self and then like you said being a private investor at that point yeah. so this is like one of the best kept secrets for investing in real estate because the yeah. if i remember correctly the rockefeller the rockefellers are the ones that actually like created the whole self-directed ira system uh, yeah. And it's 200 years later, it's still in place to this day. Exactly. For, for a reason. Exactly. And not only that, but, you know, even like, say, like for you, um, your AI business or whatever, you want to scale that, um, they can they can uh, borrow you. You know what I'm saying? They can borrow you, too. Like, so it doesn't have to be just real estate that they they invest in. They can invest in any kind of company, you know, or Although, restaurant or Although investing in somebody's like startup, for example, right? So like with our AI services company, uh, that would be more risky than investing in real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yes. when, when they you, invest you're, with you're, you. You're right. You're correct on that. Because what we do is with the, what their money is, we, we have them on the loan document. So if something would happen to, say me, like you said, I get hit by a bus. and the, So they can... Again, so now they're on the title, so then they can whatever help, you know, get it finished, right? And then they put that house back on the market, and then they sell it, and then they get their money. They get their money. So they're, you know, we have them secured by the loan, and then plus we put them on our the insurance too, um, in case some, like you said, in case something happens, they're secured. So they're fully, property. yeah, they're they're one hundred percent secured. Their money is safe investing yes. with you. Yeah. It's not again. Here we are. Like I mean, you know, hundred percent. It's not a hundred percent guarantee, right? Like the house could flop and whatever, you know. But, uh, but a good chance that that won't happen. But it just there is, you know, like what you've never seen a house go to zero, right? So, right. Like I said, it's very, very slim. But it's like you said, we can't say a hundred percent because totally is not a hundred. You can't agree to that hundred percent. But sure, yeah. But I mean, close. but as far as like protecting their investment. They, yeah. They're secured by a piece of real property. Real Whereas property. if somebody was going to invest in our AI services company, they're investing into nothing secured. Yeah. They're investing into totally us, good. our company, uh, our intellectual property. But like, what was it? Where's the value in that? There's no tangible asset yeah. that they can hang yeah. on to. Whereas yeah. if people use their self-directed IRA to invest in real estate and real property, even if you are terrible terrible flipper and you do an awful job and you guys let's say break even they're still getting their money back exactly exactly yep there hasn't been a person that i haven't paid back like you said because you're right i mean just i mean i mean you'd really have to not know what you're really really not doing in order to like you said to go upside down right but yeah yeah so what kind of projects are you guys working on right now what are you doing so right now we have um, we have two things going on. We have one in um, Atlanta, Georgia, and then one in Jacksonville, Florida. One oh. the Jacksonville, Florida one. Um, that again, that one was a cheaper one. Now that one we went to the like your cheaper end. We bought it for what was it two hundred, and we had 
fifty in the rehab, so we're trying to sell it. This one we're only gonna make probably around fifty to three hundred. We're right in the three hundred range for selling it. It's on the market now. We're getting offers. Um the Atlanta Georgia one now, this can be this I can I'll go with a little story on this one. So we bought this one from the parents now. This is from the parents. Um now this is over a year. Now this is right at a right at a year ago, I believe. We're right at a year. Wow. So they so then they have older sons. We do not know exactly how old their sons are there. We're thinking like the 30 range. They have two of them. All of a sudden they become squatters. And I've never, like you said, this whole COVID thing and this, I, it's just amazing what squatters can get away with nowadays. Yeah. I, I'm, we're just floored. Like, okay. So now they, so now they're pushing back and saying that, whatever their kid, their parents weren't capable enough to sign the papers, but they had their own lawyer top it off. Now they had their own lawyer. Wow. So the lawyer went through all the paperwork. They signed it. Everything was agreed. We signed it. And like you said, then we went to go get in the property and they were there and then they pulled, started pulling strings and everything left, right. I mean, they, so I guess, so then you got to give them a 60 day no notice minimum of 60 day notice. Then it's, and then they can still fight it and they're still fighting it. Now he, now it goes to a judge and the judge is going to make the final call. Like it just, it just, it's been a nightmare from day one. Like we got, like you said, interest payments going out. It, it just was not, it's not been a good deal on that one, but you know, like you said, it is what it is. We'll get through it all said and done, but the profit that went from really good to now terrible. Wow. So you're investing in these out of state. Obviously you're in twin cities, Minnesota, and you've yeah. got one deal in Atlanta and another one in Florida. How do you find these deals? Um, a lot of it's just, um, wholesalers. Okay. Like both of those are wholesalers. I mean, um, or we're just, like you said, just go online and start. I mean, like you said, you can have, a CRM and go into you know, different areas, right? Pick whatever. I my other business partner um, is in uh, Tampa, Florida, so he's been coming across quite a few deals in Florida that we're looking at now um, instead of up here. It's really slow up here because of the time of the year. Um, Minnesota, you basically you got from basically from September, I'd say the end of September to. <laughs> excuse me february it's really slow because people don't want to move during the winter and holidays yeah so it's terrible here trying to sell a house in yeah. that time frame so how do you deal with like contractors and, and all that stuff remotely um that was so the uh the jacksonville was well both these are the uh, but we haven't got a contractor in on our Atlanta one, but our Jackson one, we had, um, back to, again, I was, um, another mastermind. I found a contractor in there and, um, um, he ended up doing the work. So I just had him do a lot of videos and take pictures of things. Um, I, after, cause that was our first time doing virtual like that. Now, the next ones that we do, either him or, him or I are going to fly to it, go through it, write down everything, you know, write down everything that needs to be rehabbed and get a little bit because they, they kind of screwed us a little bit on that side of things because they said that this needed to be fixed when we didn't, we don't think it really needed to be fixed. And so if we would have went there, one of us would have went there and walked through it first and got a you know, good, strong rehab thing, then, then we could have just held to our ground, but we didn't. And so we got it. We had to kind of take their word for a little bit. And the rehab could have been a lot cheaper. Let's put it that way after all said and done. So we, it was a learning experience on that part of it. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you're basically finding local contractors that are doing all the yeah. work for you. You're mostly relying on uh, their pictures and videos that they're sending you. But on future deals, you're going to be traveling physically yourself to go well, do I'll a just, We just got. We just figured we'd have to make it once, at least one stop shop, or one at least one time. Yeah, and that's before 
everything gets rolling. Because then, like, we can say, well, okay, this is what I have on my spreadsheet. And he, and he has something else. Well, I'll say throw that out. We're not we're not doing it. Yeah. I've been there. I looked at it. So I know what I want or we want, you know. So instead of him saying, well, this is this needs to be done, well, it was hard to justify it when we weren't even there. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, definitely. Was, like you said, it was a good one. It was a good one learning experience. So what what I'm hearing is basically either you have somebody you trust on site or, you know, boots on the ground, or you physically go to that property yourself yeah. and do your yeah. own inspection as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The other thing we heard too, and we'll kind of maybe look into a little bit is having a realtor that say the realtor that we're going to have sell the house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just have them bob in once in a while and just check things over and then just give them at the end, you know, because they're going to sell it for us. We'll just give them another half a percent or, you know what I'm saying? Something to help, help them for their time, you know? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Incentivize them to, to help you out and do that part of it. And I think that's a great idea, you know, finding an investor friendly real estate agent, um, I was in real estate for a number of years uh, before the you know recession and all that, and, and I think that that's a great idea because yeah. every, especially right now in this market, well, every market's local, of course, but like everybody's feeling the crunch of the interest rates, and I think that a lot of real estate agents out there are looking to try and diversify and create yeah. other ways to make money. And that's yeah. a great way for a real estate agent. If there are any real estate agents listening right now, this is a great way. Get investor friendly, start going out there and networking with investors who are doing flips and offer that service. Offer yeah. the service yeah. to almost be like a project manager, but not really a project manager, more like yeah. a, a project checker upper yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and see just what's checking, going on. Yeah, just making sure the work's getting done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really, and like you said, it, I don't know, you know, let's, let's say it takes you 10 minutes to walk through the property. It's not like you're, you're, it's not a whole lot of time. You know, you just, you're just stopping in there, walking through the property a little bit, checking things out and then leaving. I mean, and you could, like you said, time it where you're driving by another house, looking at a, another property, whatever it is, you know, like, so yeah. it's not really a lot of time out of their time either, you know? Yeah, it's really not. It's really, yeah. really not. And that could equal, you know, an extra 10 grand or something like that yeah. for them upon sale. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. A little extra cash. Yeah, definitely worth it. And I mean, you can obviously incentivize them uh, by signing a listing agreement with them prior to. Right, right. Exactly. And you have that stipulation in there. So that way everybody feels comfortable. Everything's fair and above board. Because yeah. uh, there's a lot of screwy business in real estate, yeah. especially in the agent world. You know, there's a lot of people that, a lot of people promise things like sellers, right? Seller, oh yeah, you'll get the listing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they never do. And they go with their cousin or whatever, because they're going to give yeah. them another quarter percent off. So yeah. I think this is a really good, this is really good advice to uh, flippers and investors is to sign a listing agreement with yeah. them and say, hey, I'm going to pay you an extra half a percent if you agree to do these checkups, these, let's say yeah. weekly checkups, maybe twice yeah. a week or something, depending on how yeah. much is going on in that property. Right. Yep. And then that secures their future to list the property. So I think that's exactly. a great idea. Yeah. How are you and finding always, too, or, my thing too with, with realtors? If I always tell any of the realtors that I've come across, I said, you bring me the deal. I will close the deal. You get that, you get the, the front end. And then also now you get to sell it on the back end. So I've always told that for every realtor that brings me a deal, you know, an off market deal or on market, whatever it is. Um, I said, you get to, you get to sell it to me and then you get to sell it to another seller yeah, or buyer, another buyer, you know? Hey everybody, really quick. I just wanted to let you know that we do this for free. We do this out of the goodness of our heart. And all that we ask of you is just to quickly leave a review if you wouldn't mind. It really helps the algorithm and it helps push this out to a lot more people every time you do that. And if you've already subscribed, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But definitely leave a review. It really, really helps us out. And I know for you guys, it only takes like less than 30 seconds. Okay, back to the show. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Are you strictly doing residential stuff or are you guys looking at commercial as well? We are um, looking at commercial now. We might do some, 
we're trying to get out a little bit of the single family stuff a little bit more and go into the multifamily. We do have um, my partner in Florida there, him and I have a four unit in Washington, D.C. Again, that came in, that opportunity came up to him because he's on the financing side of things. So he gets some pretty cool deals. And um, that came up. And so what we had to do with that one was we had to flip it basically and then put it back on the market. Um, again, back to that story, back to the squatter thing here, we had another squatter, two squatters in that one too. So we got two of the four units done. We got them flipped in really nice. Um, and then we we're trying to get, we we're in the meantime, we we're trying to get these two others, two other squatters in there. And we, like I said, we offered them what, what's, this is what's mind boggling. You offer a person cash to, to help them move out and to find another place and they don't take it. I, I, I that's, what's mind boggling me. Cause we did the same thing in Atlanta, Georgia. We offered them cash and said, Hey, here's some cash, go, whatever. It's good down payment for your next, for a rental property, whatever, a rental apartment, whatever it is. And I said, you don't have to pay for that up front. And I, and we don't, and so now, you know, like same goes for the Atlanta and same goes for these other people. Now they don't get anything. They're going to, eventually the cop is going to come knocking on their door and saying, you got to get out now. Like they don't have a choice. They got, they don't have a choice. They got to get out. Like, but it, they left money on the table. That's it's mind boggling how people leave money on the table like that. Wow. I don't know. Now, how how much are you offering them? What are you giving them? Um, the one, well, everyone actually, all three of them. We offered five k for the Atlanta property, and then five five k each on the um the the uh, four unit in Washington D.C. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's enough for a down payment. Right for a security deposit and first month's rent, yeah. depending on the size of the property that they're going to buy, right? Or right. I mean, rent rather. Right. Yeah, I mean that's, but I guess some people just don't want to leave, right? Some people want to stay where they're at. Yeah, yeah, I, and I get that too. But but then the end, they got to realize that they don't have a choice at a certain point. You know, whenever that point comes, the cop is going to knock on their door. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know. and then they're going to get nothing, and they're going to get kicked out exactly yeah they get like you know an hour to get their shit out like that's wild that, man. that's what's that's what, that's what i'm saying that's what's mind-boggling and even the lana and the lana one we actually gave them five plus we said hey we'll we'll pay for the moving company too wow i didn't take it i don't i like i said it's just mind-boggling how people think i don't i don't get it like i don't what their thought process is. I get, like you said, I get that you don't want to move, but, but there comes to a point that you don't have a choice either. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all learn through our experiences, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I still, if somebody's coming to my house and saying, Hey, you're getting booted and I'll give you 5k. I don't know. I think I would take it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so are you looking for any other kind of larger uh, commercial deals or is that, are you looking for like residential style? Are you, go, are you guys going after like warehouses and things like that too, or no? No, we're not going after warehouses. We're going to go after bigger uh, multifamily. I say, you know, like from, we're trying to go from like, we're saying from like a minimum right around a 50 to 300. 300 yeah. units. Yeah. 50 to 300 yeah. So you guys yeah. going to do like a syndication model? Yep. Yep. Okay. Syndication where, like you said, I I love, that's one thing that I love doing. Besides, I'm really good at the construction side of things. I'm really good at that too because I've been around all my life. But the other thing what I love doing is making connections just like you. You know, we all love, we love making connections. I I love that part of it, making connections with investors. Um, I have one where, and I think I think it has to do with the holiday season. Where, that I brought in, or I, I la almost I landed, I think, and not hundred percent yet, but I landed a million dollar investor um, that is going to help us with some some good opportunities, right? So we're hoping hoping after the first year they're kind of like on the fence about things, and they're about uh, you know what I'm saying they're dragging their feet, which I get it at this time of year. You know people are don't really want to do much right at the time of the holidays, and I get it, but yeah, I, I just recently. Um, again, social media reached out to a person and 
um, here, here she has another invest or another person that she knows that wants to could be up to six million. That's awesome. And yeah. so, so if you get those investments, right? If you get a million or five million or six million, um, you can take that money and turn that right because of a down payment. You can turn yeah. that money into a right one million down. Yep. Let's say that's a twenty percent down. Yep. You can turn that into a five million dollar purchase. Yep. Exactly. That's and I think saying, that's so... the pow- that's the power of real estate is that you don't ha- like people think that I'll never be able to buy a five million dollar property, and it's like, well, yeah, you will. All you got to do is either find, uh, you know, you got to find one person who will invest a million dollars. Yep. Or you find ten people with a hundred thousand. Yep. And I exactly. think that people people are afraid. Yep. People don't think that there's that much money out there, but money is literally everywhere. Oh yes. Investor exactly. money is literally everywhere, but you have to have a compelling enough offer. You have to make money feel safe. Yep. And you have to make people feel like they're going to get their money back because those are the yeah. two most important things, right? Right. Well, and the big one is like, no and trust. They got to like, no and trust you. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a big one right there. Like all th- those three, like they got to trust you. They got to like you. They got to know you. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- in order to some, some like that stuff, like a million dollars has to happen. I mean, they got to, you know, got to, like you said, they got to feel comfortable investing their million dollars into something, um, you know, but, uh, but like, well, that's like I said, what I like about with real estate is because like you said, it's, it's backed up by a property, you know, like, like his, his will be a, a multi 50, 50 unit multi family, you know, say just for, you know, that he puts it down a million dollars on that. But what I've noticed r- right now at the moment, because like you said, of all the interest rates and stuff, People are wanting to go more short-term stuff investing. So then with that, then you got to, like you said, then you got to look for something like a flip because you multifamily, it's, it's a minimum, usually a minimum of five years. You're, they have to invest on a big multifamily deal because we can't, you know, we're going to rehab, we're going to buy it. And then, like I said, and then eventually get it up and then, and then either refi it out and then, pay them and then and then we get started from there then that's all ours from the rest from there on or we sell it whatever whatever the opportunity is there at that point um so you're talking about the burr method yeah kind of yep right can you go over that what's what's the burr method for people that don't know what it is well the burr method is like you said you buy it rehab it and then and then you basically so then you you can you can do it again. Basically, you can keep doing it again, 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 because you're like you said, you're putting your money in there. You're like you said, rehabbing it, and then and like you said, then then at the end, where like you said, I did, then I can sell it or I refi it out, and and then like you say, if there's any investors in, then we when we refi it out at that point, then we pay off their what they invested, and then they. Like you said, it either go on their merry way or they we get them in another opportunity. Ninety percent of the time, usually they get another opportunity. And like I said, then when we refi it out, then it's all basically ours that we're making so much a year, say hundred k a year on that property. With the, so and then like you so said, you buy it right, and then you'll rehab it, and then you you refi everybody's money out. So you do a cash yeah. out refi. You pay yep. back your investors their yep. an original capital or a portion of their original capital, but then they stay in the deal and share in the profits. Yep, yep, yep. They can exactly they can stay in the deal, or they can, like you said, or they want their they want to get out on the deal and they want they want to get in a different deal or whatever. You know, yep. It's it's at the end of the day, it's their decision, um, and most of them, you know, all the ones that I've had so far up to this point, like. They want to keep their money working, right? They want to keep it working, like so. Then they're like, "Okay, we'll just put my money here, put put my money in the whatever, whatever you think." And then, like I said, then we gotta show them what we're looking at, and then, like I said, go over a thing with them, and, and then they, as long as they feel comfortable, then we just keep rolling. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And obviously, once you gain their trust by a one positive investment, they yeah. don't really want to go anywhere else. They just want to keep no. their money with you. 
Yeah, they All just right. want to keep it. Like I said, they just want to keep it making money. Yeah. And you've been doing this. You have a track record now. So it's proven yeah. that you can do it and not lose money. And so you have case studies where you can show people, hey, here's how we did it. Here's how much we made. Uh, yeah. Past performance is not indicative of future results, but here's our track record. Yeah. The other thing, the big thing was, and you you know too, but the big thing was, um, and I listen to um, Dan Fleischman quite a bit, and he's very good at teaching. Um, but the big thing, what people, what people don't understand is, they got say okay so like say if I'm I, I did some research on this too and I actually had a uh, I was in a event I I was got asked to teach at a, or talk at an event and I did some research did some stuff and so the big one that I pull out okay so say an average an average person makes 400k through their lifetime on a four on a 401k they put in whatever through from whatever 20 to 65 right average is right around 65 retired so in that span the average now i'm just saying the average in the average 401k when that person wants to retire at 65 is right around 400k okay so nowadays obviously we know that inflation with all that 400k ain't gonna get you jack any hardly anything right after no. you're three so when, when my kids, we'll understand. put it, can we put it this way? When my kids are 65, 400K is going to buy them a Tesla. Yeah. going to buy them a car. That's how much cars are going to be when my kids are 65. Exactly. Exactly. So what people aren't doing nowadays is with all this inflation stuff, they're not realizing that when they go to retire, it's not going to be enough. So they got to start putting money, either start, like you said, you start investing it into bigger returns. And so they, so they're getting more money or, you know, like you said, because all said and done, and not only the other thing is going on is we're living longer too. So, okay. So now we're going to go from 65 to say 90, you know, the wasn't before, even at a hundred. I mean, so like Dan says, like you're going to have to roughly have 1.5 million in your account to make to be able to even like to say at 1.5, you would take, say as it breaks it down, you're averaging, I think you're right around 8K a month in, to live off 8K a month for the rest of your life from 65 to 100. 8K is nothing. No, that isn't not, nothing. Like, that's what I'm saying. People, that's where people, we got to get people to change their mindset of that, that, that 401k is not going to do anything nowadays. It just, it really is not. And that's what, that's what's scary. I'm not, you know, it's scary. Like, yeah, it's not going to be enough. Well, and it's also tied to the stock market, which you can't control at all. Exactly. Exactly. And, you can and there is, yeah, there's no, um, there's no consistent returns with that. I mean, if you hold, obviously if you hold blue chip stocks for 20 years, you know, you're, you're going to have some sort of a return, but Maybe it's going to be somewhere between three to five percent annualized. And what are you giving investors as far as your return? So I'm average. Mine is more or less right around twelve. On my flips, it's twelve. I put twelve. But like when we get into multifamily, now we got to drop it because of the longer span. So we're right around eight, eight percent preferred yeah. return. Yes. Yeah, but then they also share in the profits as well. Exactly. So yeah. their annualized return could be somewhere in the range of 20 to 30%, depending on how you operate that property or what that deal looks like. Exactly, exactly. So would somebody want to take, I mean, this is a rhetorical question for everybody listening, but like, would you rather have 3 to 7% in the stock market or 20 to 30% backed by real estate? Exactly. It's a no-brainer. A no-brainer. You know, no-brainer. No-brainer. And on, yeah. Yeah. And and we and we, and we were taught in that and like I said when we started the real estate and we were taught that right away from in the class that you know like you said it's it's a no brainer why would you take ten ten percent you know eight to ten or eight to twelve to instead of five over here in the stock market and like you said and not only that but I mean not only that so now you're gonna pay taxes on that 400 like that 400k like i was talking about now he has that you have to pay 400k when you at, at 65 and you gotta take that out and and who's to know who's to say right now that our the tax percent might go up the 
whatever it might go up to. You know what I'm saying? So now they might have to pay, pay more taxes on that for them when they go. You know, I don't. We don't know that part, but yeah, it's better to be invested in real estate and have that consistent income coming in where you get those distributions as an investor. You share in those profits. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's awesome, man. I. I, like I said, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a no brainer, but yeah, definitely people look at it different, differently, but I mean, like, like you said, your parents and my parents, like they're kind of stubborn and they like work, work, work all their life. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then save, save, save. And what the scary part is uh, like, too, is like, I was listening to a podcast the other day or it was a while ago, but, um, this gal was talking about her parents, um, he turned 65, save, 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 put all this money in this 401k and, and then he passed away. Wow. Didn't get to see, didn't get to use a dime of that. And that's the other thing. And like, we don't know what tomorrow will bring us. I mean, you save, save, save. And now where is that going to go? Yeah. They didn't get to, he didn't get to enjoy it. I mean, he'll obviously the kids will get it. I mean, like she said, I'll probably get some of it, but. But still, though, like he didn't get to enjoy it. Yeah. So better to better to invest in real estate and enjoy it now. Yeah, invest yeah. right, and invest and make money, and like you said, enjoy it. Go on big vacations. Yeah. All right, Jamie. For everybody out there listening who wants to get in touch with you or wants to know more about real estate investing, how do they get a hold of you or find you? Yeah, are you on the socials and stuff? Yes, I am on all platforms and a lot of it, a lot of it's just go Thundermeyer. You can Google just hit Thundermeyer because like my Facebook is Jamie Thundermeyer. Um, Instagram is Thundermeyer. Um, TikTok is Thundermeyer. Um, my are you Facebook... doing, are you doing dances on, on TikTok or what? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I just got short videos of, what either some projects or I just say what's going on in my life kind of basically just cool. Awesome, man. Well, Jamie, it's been a pleasure, man. I'm I'm glad that we got to actually hang out and, and finally do this. We've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on today and for everybody listening out there. Thank you so much for listening to the mind your own business podcast. It's been great having you and we really look forward to next week's show. Thank you everybody. Hey everybody, really quick, I just wanted to let you know that we do this for free. We do this out of the goodness of our heart. And all that we ask of you is just to quickly leave a review if you wouldn't mind. It really helps the algorithm and it helps push this out to a lot more people every time you do that. And if you've already subscribed, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But definitely leave a review. It really, really helps us out. And I know for you guys, it only takes like less than 30 seconds.